Hello, it's time to save guys. There's, there's no other way of putting it. Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about the platinum summons or the non-limited summons versus the limited summons. We are about to move into a new era of Princess Connect where we are pretty much going to be scrambling for gems all the time. I really wanted to get this video out before Ilya is released because like it's just going to be really rough if you like go all in on Ilya and you can't like save up for waifus and shit. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's talk about this so this is restia's uh character release schedule and this is effectively showing us the order in which all of the characters were released as well as the welfare ones this is a very useful roadmap and thank you restia i will link this in the description below these dates may not be a hundred percent accurate but like generally this is kind of like it's kind of looking pretty right to be honest all right with that aside i want to talk about what i mean by like end of an era or the start of a new era as you can see here it's only been about like four months and we've had all platinum banners all of these characters up here and down here have been added to the permanent pool and we are about to not get any of that anymore. If you guys have watched my gacha strategy video, I have like shown or highlighted the, the units that you should really pull on but i was thinking more about it and like after experiencing the gem income from the game itself i was kind of like well crap we better like prioritize our waifus or else like we're not getting any of them and the reason is this so you can see these guys are shaded as a person who's been playing competitive clan battle for the last four months or so it pains me that i cannot roll for summer suzume or summer pekrin or summer tamaki what can i say i love my summer characters okay i know one of my friends pulled like 240 times across a few different accounts and he only got one three star in all of them it's very very tragic like like, all I'm trying to say is that you cannot ever guarantee your luck on any of these banners. Well, I mean, you can't. It's like a 300 pull pity. But yeah, all right, let's keep going along. And so we've got Summer here. And then we've got Halloween over here. And that's just like followed by a prefez banner. After the prefez banner, we then have Christmas, as you can see. And then we have New Year's. Like, oh, and then Valentine. Okay, Valentine Shizuru right there. So as you can see here, from May, the middle of May, all the way to December and beyond, like, there's only going to be really like limit. It's like 70% to 30%. 30% limited to non-limited banners. The first thing I want to stress to you guys is to not FOMO. So FOMO stands for fear of missing out. It just like means that if you don't get, oh, Summer Kiaru now, then you can't get her ever again. That's not true. In this game, I believe the only ones that you can get FOMO'd from are probably the ReZero collab characters. I believe every other banner actually comes on rerun. All right, with that being said, I want to talk about why this is kind of like this video is coming out before Ilya is coming out. I know there are a lot of you that are really into Ilya and like you can see she is going to be here released in April. However, we will also also get another Ilya banner in October, which is six months away. If Ilya is your waifu, you roll for her now. If anybody is your waifu, you roll for them now. After Ilya's appearance in October, she actually comes back in May here. So she actually come back like every like six months, like four to six months, I believe. The frequency of the limited banners is usually about a year. So we've got summer banner there, Halloween and then Christmas, right? So we've got summer here and then I would expect like Halloween. Yep. And then Christmas over here, as well as the New Year's units around there. The point that is probably the most important is that if you don't need to put it into any of the non-limited banners don't do it for example the upcoming banner nozomi like i know a lot of you are like really hardcore into the oh i'll just try like 20 30 pulls if you do that for every banner it just kind of like diminishes your chance of getting like the limited ones so what it really is is a trade-off between like six months between the character you want that's non-limited so for example Ilya, as well as the chance to spook her on any other banner versus the yearly rotation limited banners so with that being said i wanted to run through my priorities for clan battle and for arena again as well as like kind of general usage i said i wanted to run through it but really i'll be evaluating this chart which i largely agree with to be honest i think this is a great chart and a great summary of like what you should pull for the priorities right so credits to chaos edit stuff for this one i think it's been a couple of months since this was released but so it's saying like top priority summer kiaro christina muimi so let's go through the reasoning for each one so summer kiaro you guys already know her for cb right but really she will definitely also perform in arena because she is a front to back mage with some defense shred as well I don't know if she's going to perform as well as Kyoka, but you can definitely use her in a mage melt. Christina is kind of the first character which makes you think like, oh wow, she's like in her own league. However, the pulling plan or strategy for her is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit iffy and I want to talk about that later. Muimi is another one which makes you think like, oh wow, okay, actually my units are pretty crappy compared to her. Prefez units, as you guys already know, like you guys should be trying to spark every one of them. If we go down to PvP and this is probably one of the things that made me go like, oh 
crap. There's no way that you can roll for all of this. We've got Ilya, who you guys already know all about. She's pretty meta-defining. But then we've also got Summer Pekrin, Halloween Shinobu, and Halloween Misaki. Halloween Shinobu is when Ilya's reign of terror is kind of like over. That's not to say that Ilya is useless anymore, especially because Halloween Shinobu will be a limited character. But it's kind of like if you're focused on PvP, you kind of have to get all of these. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is that you got Pekarin, Shinobu, and Misaki. And if we come back here, we've got Pekarin here, we've got Shinobu, and we've got Misaki all like within the space of four months. That is pretty tough, to be honest. As for CB pickups, we've got Sama Tamaki and we've got Valentine Shizuru. However, one other character that is very prominent that's not featured here is actually Tomo. For top tier clan battle players, a lot of you are probably going to be going for Tomo. However, I definitely would recommend following this and go Sama Tamaki and Valentine Shizuru over her. Unless, again, Tomo is your waifu. After that, we've got New Year's Yui and Kyoka. So I think Kyoka has already gone past. Kyoka has been very useful in both CB and Arena. However, she is permanent. But let's talk about New Year's Yui. So New Year's Yui is probably one of the best defensive characters in the game. A lot of people call her a cheat code and she'll pretty much like make you never die in PvE content. Please do not sue me if you die in PvE. So now that we're up to New Year's Yui, this is what I wanted to talk about. So there is actually a banner that features both New Year's Yui and Christina. If I come back to the chart over here, what we have over here, where is it? this one, this one right here. So you see how this says festival and it says limited. We have another festival character here and Christina. So New Year's Yui is not a festival character, but her banner is a festival banner. It's a prefez banner. And so what that means is that if you guys still don't know, prefezes, they all feature all of the previous prefez units. So what I'm trying to say here is that New Year's Yui here actually features Christina as well. So one potential strategy, especially if you're not competitive, I would highly recommend this actually, is that you could potentially, now if you guys love Christina, just go for her. But yeah, you guys could potentially hold off on getting Christina here and actually waiting until you get New Year's Yui banner here. Because what you could do here is try those 300 rolls or the spark on the New Year's Yui banner here. Hopefully within those 300 rolls, you get either Christina or New Year's Yui. And hopefully statistically speaking, you'll have gotten one of them and you'll be able to spark the other. So what that means is that if you're willing to wait two months for Christina and actually pull her here, then you'll kind of be able to like guarantee a little bit more, like your odds will be way better to get both New Year's Yui and Christina in 300 rolls rather than having to potentially spark in both of the banners. Obviously, this all assumes that Crunchyroll and Psy Games are going to be doing the banners exactly that they have been, which they have been so far. You know, it's a reasonable assumption. So yeah, that is an option if you guys are running low on gems. If you miss out on Christina in September, you can definitely get her again in November. The last character around here that I want to talk about of prominence is Chika. So Christmas Chika is in a very interesting scenario. Let's put it that way. She's pretty average until year two, which is like from there onwards. However, this is probably one of the only opportunities to get her on rate up. So what I'm trying to say is that if you don't want to spark for her, you go for Chika here. Me personally, I might try for her, but I'm not going to go all the way for the spark. And the reason is because as a CB focused player, I'm going to be saving a spark for Kiaru. If I'm insistent on staying on top 10, I have to go for Christina. She's just too like game breaking at this point in the game. New Year's Yui is another big one. And then we've got Shizuru over here. But not only that, right after Valentine Shizuru, we have Muimi over here. Not only do I love Muimi as a character, she is also game breaking too. Coming down over here, we finally kind of like have a little bit of a break. However, a couple of these characters are pretty game changing too. We've got Kasumi and Anne who are really, really strong in arena. Well, Kasumi at least, I don't know too much about Anne. And it's kind of like the same situation as up here, right? Like, you know, Ilya is pretty meta defining and so is Kasumi. Except Kasumi has actually stayed in meta and in relevance in JP till this day. But you can see that the break only lasts really for like two months before we get another limited. And then from then on, we start getting the collab units. We've got ReZero and then more summer units. So these are the new summer units, Susana, Siren, and Makoto. And of these three, two of them are must-haves. It's kind of on the scale of all prefez units. I'm talking like a summer Siren and the summer Makoto. Summer Siren is probably one of the best characters in the game, if not the best. She's relevant in pretty much all content and she is just going to make everything so much easier. After those two, we've got Summer Maho if you're into that. And then we've got Neneka, who is a new prefez unit. Right after Neneka, we've got the transfer student Aoi, who is a CB unit. And then we've got the Halloween Kyoka, and then it all goes on again. I'm not going to go any further than this because this is going to take like 30 minutes, but like I'm trying to say like this game is so loaded with like limited units and I don't think our income can support most of it. That's not to say that Crunchyroll or side games or whoever is not generous. It's just that they really know how to pull money out of your wallets. That's all. So I've kind of gone through like the next year or so. So let me try to kind of count the high priorities. One, Summer Kiaru. Two, Summer Pekarin. Three, Summer Tamaki. Four, Shinobu. Five, Halloween 
Misaki, six Christina, seven Christmas Chica, eight New Year's Yui, nine Halloween Shizuru, ten Muimi. Assuming we skip all of these guys, eleven Oedo Kuka. I've just lost count, but if you're into collabs, we've got Rem and we've got Emilia, and then we've got the Saren and Makoto summers that we have to have, and that takes us to about June, which is about like a year, a year, two months away from today. That's like twelve to fifteen sparks, depending on if you want the collab units or not. Twelve to fifteen sparks in one year, like that is a lot. That's three thousand six hundred rolls for like the most conservative, I guess, estimate. If I multiply that by the gemmy cost, that comes to five hundred and forty thousand gems. This is just to guarantee it. Obviously, like you're gonna hopefully be able to get some on spoo. Five hundred and forty thousand gems over the next year. I don't think that's happening. And all of this is leading me to my most important point, and that is to save for waifus because there is no freaking way that you can like keep up with all of that crap. The pacing is just way too fast. Like, we do have like some free gacha rolls, 110 gacha here, 130 over here, which is pretty nice. Another 140 here from Muimi and maybe like Crunchyroll will be a little bit generous. You know what I'm saying? Hello, Crunchyroll. How you doing? But yeah, 3,600 rolls, like it's just not realistic. So roll for your waifu. From this point on, I'm probably going to be a little bit more casual. I'm even thinking of doing the whole Christina into the New Year's Yui plan. That means that I'm certainly going to get kicked out of my top 10 clan, but like we'll see what happens. Unfortunately, there are too many waifus in this game and I'd rather go um, a little bit casual to get everyone I want rather than like give up too many because I like, obviously you can't get all of them. Ah, so the one last thing I wanted to talk about is actually the festival banners. So up until now, we have not had a single festival banner. However, one viable strategy after we start getting our first festival banner is to actually save and only roll on those prefest banners. The reason I say this is because the gaps between each of them is between like two to four months. So as you can see here, Christina to Yui is about two months. Yui then to Muimi is about two months. And then we've got Muimi to Oedo Kuka, which is about another two months. Oedo Kuka to the next one is Nenika, which is about four months. So I would consider pulling something in between here as well. But by and large, what's going to happen is that a lot of people are going to start saving and only pulling on prefest banners. And that's probably one of the smartest things to do because the rate up is like two times. All right, guys, I'm going to try to summarize all of this because that was quite a long video. My first point is that from here on out, after this like non-limited streak, we are going to be bombarded with a lot of limited characters. Over the next year, we're probably going to get about 12 to 15 high priority units. There is absolutely no way that we can get all of them. So you need to like prioritize which ones you want the most. As for Christina and Yui, there is a tactic where you can hold off rolling on Christina until the New Year's Yui festival banner. What happens here is that you can put in 300 rolls, hope for one of them and then spark the other. Aside from that, platinum or non-limited banners typically rotate in about like six months and they are also added to the permanent pool. Limiteds are not like gone forever, so don't FOMO on them. So if you don't need them, don't go for them. However, the most important point is that if you want somebody, you need to plan for them and you need to go for them. Pull-up characters may or may not come back. We've got Rem here and Amelia here. In a lot of games, they don't come back and I don't even know if we're going to get these ReZero characters. The real waifu game starts like now. And let me tell you, it's going to be so hard to be competitive in both CB and Arena from here on. Alright guys, let's wrap up the video here. That was way too long. I've got a secret question for you guys. Over the next year of all those characters that we just talked about, who are you looking most forward to? For me, I think you guys already know I'm a big Muimi fan. As you can see, I've got a Muimi over here, down over here. Look at her. She's so cute. But I am also a massive Summer Saren fan as well. You guys let me know who you're into and drop it into the comments below. But yeah, aside from that, let's wrap it up here. If you guys have found this video helpful or enjoyed it, kinda, then consider leaving a like, a sub, or a follow, or a pin. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.